it's hard to put a finger on why it's so appealing to us. I think that just that propulsion feeling. There is definitely a joy of driving. The, the feel of acceleration and to have a, a, a very focused, engaged experience with driving. Shelly is a self-driving race car. Uh, we take the car to the racetrack two days every month and we try to benchmark the racing car performance of the car to a human race car driver. And we try to understand how we can control the cars uh, or this car specifically at the limits of handling. Um, not so much because we want to replace race car drivers, but because we want to understand how we can make cars safer. So if this car is sliding on the track, that's very similar to your car sliding on the public road because the road is slippery, there's ice. Uh, so we want to know how we can control the car. So on the main straight, it will do 110 uh, miles per hour. Uh, that's not the top speed of the car. The car will go faster. There's just another turn coming up. So we have to slam on the brakes. Uh, and from the first turn on, the car is just always on the limits. So it's either on full throttle, it's on the brakes, or it's turning as fast as it can. And it's, it's pushing to the max. Uh, it's pushing as much as a race car driver. So we're now one second slower only. So the car is always at the limits. It's designed to be uh, raced at high speeds. So we use the racetrack as a, as a test scenario for, for the car. It all started in 2009 when uh, this car was developed to race up Pikes Peak in 2010 and did that completely unmanned. There was no one inside, which was the first, of course, ever to do that. So this is the back of Shelly, where we have all the computers and the systems that we need to control the car autonomously. We have the real-time computer. It's a D-space system, which we use to control the car 200 times a second. It determines the brake signal, how much we should be on throttle, shifting, steering. And the information it needs, the perception of the, perception of the world is coming from a GPS system which combines the signals from two GPS antennas on the roof with signals in the car uh, in terms of accelerations and rotations by gyros. We can flip these switches here in the center console where we can give the computers control of uh, steering, braking, throttle um, and finally we can switch the controls all the way and we can start the test with the sixth button. And from there on, the car is just flooring it on the racetrack. And in case something goes wrong, we can slam the red, red, red button here and stop the test at any time. So normally we start with people in the car to make sure that everything is running fine. The very first test we do is just an auto steer. So the car is steering for us and we are just in control of the throttle and the brakes. And we hand over control more and more and then we crank up the velocity of the car. And for the high speeds, we just step out of the car. We have remotes that start and stop the test from a distance and there's no one inside. I think for a long time cars will at least have pedals and a steering wheel for humans to, to control the car or take over. Uh, but we are pretty sure that cars will be safe in certain scenarios or faster in, in responding. So I think that the car will be able to take over control if it thinks or is sure that it's safer than the driver is. Cars that are supporting you and keeping your lane, keeping distance, those are already uh, on the roads. Uh, the car that will take you from home to work uh, without you touching the car ever, uh, without controlling the car, that's going to take a long, long time. Uh, it's a really hard problem. While a variety of promising research points to a bright future for autonomous cars, the loss of human driving threatens to disrupt America's rich automotive tradition. For me, yeah, I, I can't imagine what my first car would be like without a steering wheel or like that whole idea. It's just, you know, I, I was taught to, I, had, I saved my money to buy my first car. I had to learn how to work on it and fix it and know it. The car was kind of like the ultimate you know, it was freedom. You could go where you wanted to. You didn't have to have your parents drive you around. I'm a big fan of stick shift and feeling it in the road. And yeah, I don't, I don't, I mean, it really changes the whole, I mean, especially the American culture is so much about vehicles and, and that, that joy of driving. Barbara Karanian teaches a course entitled Tales to Design Cars By, which examines one's relationship with their car and how it shapes their life journey. In some of the experiences and stories that I heard from my students, some of the most dramatic ones and the ones that we remember were stories about sitting or standing or being under the car side by side with dad where life lessons were learned or mom or dad giving you a first driving experience or mom and dad or somebody else that was important in the family using the car as a tool to teach. If you remove the steering wheel and your, your ability to have some control over the driving, what will that be replaced with? will be a totally autonomous experience and automated experience. It's just something to think about.
Dr. Karanian's class recently hosted a physical exhibition that highlighted elements of cars that tell an individual story. These included engine sounds, road trip maps, and even a Formula One cockpit simulator. Car stories aren't just about cars. They're about the experiences that most people who aren't as crazy into cars as I am have in those cars. They're about road trips, family experiences, trips with friends, um, you know, the, the stupid nights you have just driving around. And so that really kind of, you know, brought in my perception of what it meant to not only like own a car, not just to care about the car itself, but also the overall experience that one can have um, in the car while th that they own. The benefits of autonomous cars are impossible to argue with. Um, you know, just convenient, safety, um, traffic pollution as well. Like, th this needs to happen in my opinion. Uh, but also, someone who loves to drive, you know, I don't want to lose out on that entirely. So I do think that you know, too many people love to drive for it to go away completely, and how that, you know maybe tracks become more of a thing where you know when you want to go and drive for fun you have this outlet but for everyone else's safety when you're on the freeway and driving around other people you have to let the car drive for yourself because it will be safer i think that's kind of where it's heading and i'd be okay with something like that because i think that you know i understand it's for the greater good and i think you know the benefits of autonomous cars are going to outweigh the, the small inconvenience i have of you know maybe not getting the gas it when i'd want to Autonomy in cars will likely one day bring greater safety to roads. However, it is important to consider how making all current drivers full-time passengers will impact driving culture in the next chapter of American history. We will have other experiences. It'll be replaced by something else. But I worry that somebody can't take me to their garage and show me the car that they've been working on, like the three cars, the car for the body, the car for the parts, the car with the engine. We won't be able to tinker in the same way. We won't be able to play with it. And I wonder too, if there'll be so few people being able to drive that that experience of understanding quality, there'll be a different kind of quality with autonomous cars, but the understanding of quality and my attachment to quality with my car or the car that I'm driving will be diminished as well.